Hello and welcome to Wanted Down Under, the show that catapults a British family right across the other side of the world to help them make the biggest decision of their life. Dave and Annabelle Williams long for the great outdoors of New Zealand. You always go on holiday and you go, oh, I'd love to retire here. I'd love to do this, um, come and live here. And we've got potentially the opportunity to do that. They think it would offer their children, Stephanie and Jake, a promising future. But daughter Stephanie isn't sure she can leave her boyfriend behind. Well, I don't know. I can't just miraculously make a decision, can I now? Well, you're going to need to at some It's point. obviously a lot easier for you lot than it is for me. Will Stephanie's dilemma hold the family back, or will they end up going where they're wanted down under? In the current economic downturn, a new life in New Zealand has a strong appeal. Last year, over 18,000 Brits grabbed the chance to transfer their skills. But had they really thought through their big decision to emigrate? We've given another 20 British families the chance of a lifetime a week down under. After that, they'll have to vote one way or the other. Will they stay in the UK or will they move to New Zealand? The Williams family from Scunthorpe live life to the full. They love to be outdoors and spend all their spare time kite surfing. Having worked hard to raise their children, energetic parents Annabelle and Dave dream of starting again in New Zealand. We could just bumble along here, which would be fine, in that, or we could have 20 years mm. of being really active, or 30 years of being active in paradise. Yeah. Dave works as a fuel tank driver and Annabelle is an occupational therapist and the main visa applicant seeking work down under. I work with children of, of all ages and uh, my aim really is to improve their, their coordination of, of movement. I always feel really lucky to enjoy the job that I do and want to go to work every day. Mum and Dad think a move to New Zealand would benefit the whole family. One of the main reasons is, is to move for the kids, really, because we think they'll have a lot better chance of making more of a life for themselves. Because I think over here it's got to a point now where you need qualifications um, for the most mundane jobs now. The Williams took a brief trip to New Zealand in 2007. 14-year-old Jake really liked what he saw. It was a lot better than what I expected it to be. Amazing landscapes and really nice towns, places like that. Beaches were really, really good. But following a family argument, 16-year-old Stephanie didn't go and she has major doubts about her move. It's going to change what happens for the rest of my life. So I think that's why it's so hard and because I haven't yet been out there and I don't know what the place is like, it's that sort of fear of the unknown. And there's one important reason why she wants to stay at home. My boyfriend Dan's just different to anyone else I've ever been out with. Thinking about moving to New Zealand, I'm thinking, well, what if I miss out on what I could have with him? You can't just make a decision to keep other people happy because it changes your life. Inevitably, her dilemma puts mum and dad in a difficult position. The worst situation, I think, would be if Stephanie didn't, um, didn't go and then having to, I think, make that decision as, as a mum and say, you know, am I happy to leave? With so much at stake, there are some difficult choices ahead for the Williams family. To help them decide whether New Zealand is the right place for their future together and Annabelle's career, we offered them a life-changing opportunity, a trip to Auckland on the North Island. We have three different lifestyles for the family to sample. One in the country, one in the city and one on the coast. Each with an offer of a job and a brand new way of life for them to enjoy on their budget. First, let's take a look at the country lifestyle. 
family can experience the best of the great outdoors in the Auckland countryside, from charming wildlife to breathtaking scenery. There's space to be found outdoors and in, with family homes ranging from £160,000 to over £300,000 for something more at market. For a starting salary of around £20,000 a year, you could take an occupational therapy job in the brand new unit at Waitakere Hospital. Fellow Brit Joe Groundshill is a team leader here. So Annabelle, this is the gym. This is where the OTs work alongside the physios. We also have speech therapists and social workers in our team and full therapy assistants. Here's some of the Allied Health team and we're looking forward to meeting you shortly when you come down under. So that's the kind of lifestyle they can enjoy in the country. Let's see what's possible in the city on their budget. The City of Auckland Seaboard location makes it an ideal spot for water lovers who want to stay within easy reach of central amenities. On the market for £275,000, this spacious four-bedroom home in the city suburb of Birkenhead has plenty of room for outdoor living. A community-based senior occupational therapist role is on offer with a salary of up to £25,000. Anna Findlay tells us more. We take rehab to our patients. We visit them in their workplaces, their schools and their homes. As a community occupational therapist, we get to get out and about a lot and we get to see loads of the city. Annabelle, I know you really would love working with us at Urbano, so I hope you pick us. See ya. It looks like their life could shape up pretty well in the city, but what about a new life on the coast? In Auckland, you're never far from a stretch of stunning coastline and when it comes to the beaches, you'll be sport for choice. For a three-bedroom family home in one of Auckland's coastal regions, prices start at around £175,000. But if you want to push the boat out, Bayside homes with fantastic sea views can be found, with this three-bedroom house marketing for £260,000. At this beautifully situated treatment centre, you could work as an occupational therapist caring for children. Here, Lindsay Rendell is keen to meet you. Annabelle, this is a national centre for children who come from all over New Zealand for rehabilitation. On a salary of around £25,000, you'll work as part of a small team of therapists. This is a wonderful site and we're very privileged to be here. But the best part about it is our staff and we'd be very happy for you to come and join us. So, there were three options on offer in the Auckland area for the Williams. In the country, where a great outdoor lifestyle and a job at Waitakere Hospital awaits Annabelle and the family. In the city, where Auckland central amenities and a community occupational therapist role are on offer. Or on the coast, where kite surfing opportunities and a job with Lindsay Wendell are up for grabs. So three very different possibilities for our family to try. So which one did we decide would suit them best? As they love to be on the water, it's no surprise that the Williams tried out the coast option for their trial week down under. But would Auckland turn out to be a positive experience for all the family? It's a relief to be in the arrivals hall at the end of a 22-hour flight. Long journey, but uh, OK. Yeah. We've survived. And Annabelle is elated that daughter Stephanie is giving New Zealand a try. And I must admit, for me, on the way over, it's just been a really nice feeling to be able to know that Stephanie's going to see and experience what we saw when we came last time. And hopefully she's going to be able to sort of sell herself on, on coming over to New Zealand. Um, I, I think at the end of the week she'll be sold on it. The pressure is on Stephanie, and though she's miles from boyfriend Dan, she's trying to keep an open mind. I want to like it. I have a feeling it'll be the 11th hour before we know. <laughs> Mum and Dad feel certain that Auckland will win the family over, but are they getting ahead of themselves? Well, wish us luck. It's going to be a very interesting week this week. <laughs> The Auckland region is one of 16 in New Zealand and its city is the largest in the country. It's the most prosperous and heavily populated area with well over a million inhabitants. 
For their trial week, the family are staying in a three-bedroom rental property in Browns Bay, an east coast suburb of the city. Wow, gorgeous. Really, really gorgeous spot. That's lovely. Oh, look at the view. Oh, wow. Oh. Wow. <laughs> the family's home in Scunthorpe is on the banks of the Humber Estuary. In Auckland, living by the water is a slightly different experience and it's one they're very happy to discover. I highly doubt we'd get a view anywhere in the UK like this. It's a brilliant view, isn't it? A bit of a contrast yeah, to home? a lot different. Upstairs, there's a spacious viewing area, complete with a telescope. Oh, my word! Even more incredible than downstairs! Bedroom one is next door, and Annabelle's quick to make a reservation. This has got to be my spot, because I need to be able to look out of that window in the morning. Well, that room too, there's mine, then. And there are two more bedrooms for Jake and Stephanie, which go down well. Yeah, oh, so this is my nice. room. Double bed. <laughs> yeah, that's all that matters. <laughs> well, it sounds like Steph's imagining a new life here. And for Annabelle and Dave, the rental property is a dream come true. Just the thought of being able to get back from work, spot Dave down there with the kite out, kite surfing, and say, right, that's it, I'm going to get down there myself, would be absolutely wonderful. And it's a fantastic first taste of New Zealand property. Just can't wait to go and have a look at the houses and just see um, what's out there for us. Looks like the family have already found their dream home by the beach. It could be a tough act to follow. Back in the UK, the Williams live in a converted four-bedroom bungalow in a small village near Scunthorpe. If they decide to sell up and make the move to New Zealand, they hope to have around £190,000 to spend. Their dream home in Auckland would be a large four-bedroomed house with a double garage and a big garden with a view of the water. Annabelle and Dave don't want to do any DIYs, they'd rather be kite surfing, so a finished property would be preferable. We found three homes to give the family an idea of what they could afford if they made the big decision to emigrate. Property One is a three-bedroom weatherboard home in the east coast suburb of Torbay. This property doesn't overlook the water, but it's close to the beaches and is within budget at 449,000 New Zealand dollars, around 180,000 pounds. On arrival, they're straight into a living area where it all goes a bit quiet. Their immediate reaction isn't encouraging. Small. Yeah, I think that's my just my first impression, just with the living area there. Just just look a bit on the small side. The deck's really, really nice out here, though. Yeah, it'd just be good to see what's uh, what's in the rest of the house, really. Yeah. Just space. With two teenagers to accommodate, lots of space is essential. Is the master bedroom a bit more roomy? Nice going on for the deck. Yeah, it is actually. Yeah. And say so it's a slightly smaller bedroom. Yeah. yeah. Further along the central corridor are two bedrooms, which could be ideal for Jake or perhaps Steph if she decides to make the big move. The three of them are all basically the same. Same size, size so there's no yeah, sort of box room. Smaller. Steph isn't impressed. It is quite small. It's not sort of what I expected. It doesn't give you a wow. No. But the girls do find something they like in bedroom number three. Yeah. <gasps> no looking. <laughs> mm, nice. And at the end of the corridor, there's a modern bathroom. That's a good size. I mean, it's, it's quite well proportioned, sort of looking at the bedrooms yeah. and the bathroom. As with everything else in this property, the kitchen is small yet perfectly formed and decorated in a modern style. But Dave isn't sure it's quite right for them. If anything, this would be an ideal first sort of home. Underneath the property is a garage. Down here, storage space isn't the problem, just a lack of headroom. Hang up all your power tools. Yeah. Oh. Low ceiling. It's a low, low overhang. Yeah. So after a good look round, what do the Williams family make of property number one? You're paying for the for the location, so it, you, you're just looking at what you're willing to compromise. It would be a lot nicer to have something with a bit more room, especially me and Jake and Pargo and a lot more if we were living so Cramped close up. together. Because <laughs> I'm wanting my own space more and more now. 
well, they don't seem too impressed, and space is obviously the major issue. Let's hope the next property will help them make up their minds. Property number two is a recently renovated three bedroom home located on the Glengarry Ridge in a suburb southwest of Auckland City. It's not by the beach, but it's under budget at only $410,000 New Zealand dollars, around £165,000. Owners Robin and Grant have lived here for 32 years and they're ready to show the family around. So, this is quite a big party there. This property has quite a bit of outdoor space, including a huge deck on the first floor. It's, it's actually got a, a double garage underneath that's concrete, all concrete block and everything. Oh, yeah. It's very sturdy. And yes. this is oh, wow. The top of it. it is. Yeah. yeah. It's a nice big deck. Yeah, lovely. Glass doors lead onto a typical living area. Having the open plan sort of feel is really nice. It's something that really does appeal. Bedroom one is spacious and bright. This is a wonderful size room. So you're quite high up here and you do have yeah. a view. And um, it's, it's just a bit unfortunate today is the middle of winter, but uh, in the summer it's a cracker. I can imagine. Really it's wonderful. Yeah, absolutely yeah. gorgeous. The second bedroom is also a generous size. It's really yeah. nice space, isn't it, actually? Because yeah. the desk's quite, it's a, a big desk there as well, yeah. so. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, double wardrobe in here. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Here's his, um, his gear. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and um, come on through to the bathroom. I have a look in there. We put a heated towel rail in here to spoil ourselves a bit these days. The bathroom has recently been decorated and makes a good impression on the family. So funky sink. Funky sink, <laughs> that's I like right. The sink. Yeah. It's uh, mains pressure here too, uh, of course, with the instant hot water. Yeah. That's really nice. It's really practical. <laughs> yeah. The third bedroom is light, bright and plenty big enough for Steph or Jake. They all look to be nice sized rooms. Mm. Yeah. Finally, the garden feels positively huge in comparison to property number one. Something, have something like this with mature trees like this in. Yeah. In the garden. Gorgeous, isn't it? So, at the end of their tour, has property two been more of a success? This is part of the lifestyle we're after, I think. Um, the outdoor living, the flow of the house outside onto a huge deck. And it would work well for those space seeking teenagers. I think it's a nice house, I like it. I like yeah. this area outside. Yeah. Like in the summer, you can throw some parties and stuff. Can you, can you just buy this house, please? <laughs> well, Jake's keen and even Steph sounding committed. Looks like property number three has a lot to live up to. I can't wait to see what there is next to pull out of the bag. Uh, <laughs> it's a big ask for the next house, I think. Property three is a four bedroom executive home in Titty Bangi, a suburb southwest of Auckland City. It's architect designed with a very modern interior and is on the market for 500,000 New Zealand dollars, just over the family's budget at 200,000 pounds. Estate agent Aaron's arrived to show the Williams around. Oh, wow, oh, what's that? Wow. <gasps> so I'm not quite sure this is what you're uh, used to back, uh, back home, but... Um... It's very modern. <laughs> yeah, very modern, yeah. The downstairs living area has a trendy minimalist decor and the girls like its style. Very nice. It's really nice. Very this nice. This has got it stand, something to make it stand out. It has, yeah, isn't it? Because it's mm. Very nice. And next door, the huge garage with electric doors makes a great impression on Dave. Nice home for a boat. <laughs> yeah, isn't it just? The master bedroom is just along the ground floor corridor. Oh, this is a nice size, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a nice little shower as well. It's kind of good because you've got your own level. You know, you're down here and they're up there, and there's a bit of a space wow. for them to get up there where they can chill out on. Yeah, you know, having that's sort of cool. move that's, spaces. Yeah, that's Thank really you. good. Upstairs, there's a roomy landing and bedrooms for Steph and Jake. Separate levels could work well for the family and help keep the peace. Okay, so you could have plasma on there with a bit of a hinge and settee yeah. or sofa there. Yeah. It's it's really nice space, space, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 
Mum and Dad love property too, but Steph thinks this house is the one. This property really appeals with it being new and low maintenance. This and the other one also appeals this as one well. Appeals so, Martin um, it's yeah. <laughs> no, only because yeah. you and Dad are obviously wanting to go off and do your own thing and whatever. Yeah. And all you've got really to do is cut the grass out the front. Steph's really taken with this property, and a clever design feature in the bathroom is yet another box ticked. That's oh. good. Yeah, it's a good it's idea. idea yeah. get out, there's nothing worse than getting out of the shower and being cold. I won't, yeah. be, I won't be able to stand there too long. Get sandbagged. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good job this isn't Dad's floor then. So what do they make of property number three? I think you're probably going to look for somewhere that meets sort of halfway between this and the other one for location, yeah, I think, I think more, is... You need a bit more of the yeah. taste of New Zealand yeah. for, to, for myself to feel that we've made a move to New Zealand. The Williams family viewed three homes on the Auckland coast. Property one was too small. The second house worked well for both parents and teenagers, whilst the modern design of property three wowed Steph. So how's their day property hunting left them feeling about New Zealand homes? I was really quite disappointed with the first house. Um, a bit too small, really. Yeah. The second house was near enough for perfect really a nice setting it's a the change from the uk i think i prefer the third one to the second the third house was lovely but a bit too clinical uh, i think the second house was perfect they're divided over their favorite home but will it affect their overall vote when it comes to property do they prefer the uk or new zealand one two three new, new zealand, zealand. <laughs> the result. <laughs> Excellent. The family are off to a great start, and Steph has loved her first taste of Auckland life. But is her heart really in it? So the Williams family can see themselves living in the houses on offer in Auckland. But will mum Annabelle, who's the main visa applicant, find the type of job she really wants? And would it pay the bills? At home in the UK, Annabelle is an occupational therapist on a salary of £25,000. Most of her time is spent in schools, where she works with children to improve their coordination. She loves her current role and finding a job to match it in New Zealand will be tough. Today, she's visiting a children's rehabilitation centre in Auckland to see how it compares. Whilst Mum's investigating work, Dave, Steph and Jake are getting their strength up for a day exploring in nearby Devonport. A change in work would be a big gamble for Annabelle and she's worried about what lies ahead. I am feeling a bit nervous, a bit apprehensive, because um, at home the area that I work in is quite a, a small sort of specialist area. Um, and here the client group is going to be quite different to the regular group of children that I would work with at home. Lindsay Rendell runs the centre and she's waiting to say hello. Welcome. Nice to meet you, I'm Annabelle. It's lovely to see you here, at last. Come on in. <laughs> Thank you. The Wilson Centre is a rehabilitation unit for residential and outpatients up to the age of 16. Lindsay takes Annabelle to meet some of the children she could be working with. This is Annabelle. Hi. Hi. Yeah. This is Aroha. Aroha, I'll just practice so I can pronounce your name properly, I think. <laughs> Hello, Natalie. What's going on this morning? The children who come here have come here with complex cases following yeah. surgery or head injury, and um, the caseload is as many children as we have here at the time, which is about 17 is the yeah. maximum. Then, of course, there's a huge amount of children who come in here for yeah. outpatients as well. At home, Annabelle manages a caseload of 67 children, so the small and friendly feel here is a welcome change. It's lovely. It's a really nice, relaxed feel. I think it's just the contrast to, to the UK, knowing how many clients I've got on my caseload. It's been a busy morning for Annabelle, and in a nearby cafe, the rest of the family are preoccupied with how she's getting on. I think your mum will vote. It definitely is. Yes. Yes, All things considered. Yes. I hope she does. Yes, New Zealand. New Zealand. I hope she votes. Yes. 
After a quick pit stop, the three of them set off to climb Mount Victoria, a volcano on Auckland's north shore. Steph's not really in the mood. Is it all right? Or... Well, headaches never okay. They always hurt. Uh, pain is a sensation. And our sensations, sensations must be endured to the fullest. Yeah, whatever. You take that route, and I'll take that. And we'll all run, see who gets to the top first. But once Dad suggests a race to the top, Steph's competitive streak kicks in. And despite her headache and the boys' head start, she beats both of them to the halfway point. <laughs> no way! Oh. They're rewarded with an incredible view. This is just fantastic. Dave set his heart on Auckland and he's desperate for his children to share his dream. Just when you look at this, you think, I hope everybody makes the right decision because this is within his grasp, hopefully, and to let it slip through for whatever reason, it'd be just, you wouldn't be able to live with yourself. It's just, you'd always be saying, what if? But with boyfriend Dan on her mind, daughter Steph just doesn't know what to do. I think that don't think I'd be able to leave Dan. And then if I don't move, uh, I'm going to miss people as well. It, you can't sort of seem to win on that one. But there's ups and downs to everything. you just got to try and choose what's best for you. Steph's facing an impossible decision. Meanwhile, back at work, Mum's weighing up her own future in Auckland. This afternoon, she's joining Aroha's session with therapist Ursula. And so today we thought we'd just have a look at how you're sitting in your wheelchair and see if we can get you in a nice position, yeah. OK? Have you, have you got your bottom right to the back of that chair? Yeah. yeah. I think you have, haven't you, there? Okay, well done. That's it. That looks good. It feels like it's just about right, because it's your chair. It's just right on the back of your legs. Am I tickling, nearly? Can you feel that finger there? Yes. Yeah. So I think that chair feels comfortable there. It's right underneath your legs. Can you? With Aroha now sitting comfortably, Annabelle heads out to the garden to meet oh, Lindsay wow. for a final chat. Oh, she's a lovely little girl, Aroha. <laughs> she's a character. Isn't she? <laughs> she is. A big part of her decision rests on salary, and she's keen to discuss figures. Looking at pay, what would be sort of an expected starting salary? Pay range goes from 40 to 60. Someone of your experience would be at the senior end of that, at the 60,000. Yeah. So that would, I think, work out to about 27,000 UK pounds. pounds. Yeah, that so, would. so yeah. that's yeah, that would be really quite a good figure to, to live on, I should expect, definitely. Yes. The pay is definitely comparable and there are lifestyle perks too. I could just see myself getting all, all of my, uh, my kite gear to work and getting out there to do a bit of kite surfing at lunchtime it would be wonderful. Well, certainly a lot of the staff go down in the summer, down the steps and yeah. swim at lunchtime. You'd fit in very well here. <laughs> you really would. Oh, it would be lovely. great. You'd en and I know you'd enjoy it as well. Yeah. Annabelle's had a great day testing out work sure. down under. Really nice to see... Um, how things uh, work over here and uh, uh, how services are set up. But given how much she loves her job at home, will she vote UK or New Zealand for work? Having made it to the top of Mount Victoria, the rest of the family are about to find out. After today, my vote for whether I'd prefer work in the UK or New Zealand has to be with... UK. The UK. Oh. Joking. No. No? <laughs> Weird. It's such a big move to complicate things by, by walking into a job that is such a contrast to what I'm used to. That would be, I know that would be probably quite a stressor. I'm shocked with the decision Mum made because she's like, all for New Zealand. <laughs> Mum's vote has come as a big surprise. What will her dramatic change of heart mean for the family's future? <laughs> Auckland's not known for being one of the world's hotspots for nightlife, but the city does boast plenty of entertainment opportunities for youngsters. Will the prospect of a few good nights out be enough to convince Steph?
New Zealand may be a small nation down under, but when day turns to night, it's certainly not the back of beyond. The nightlife in New Zealand is small but really varied. You get everything in such a small area. All the big acts come here. I don't feel like we've ever missed out. Even under 18s will find their options varied, from a relaxing dip and flick at a movie pool to something more exhilarating at late night opening sports centres. Just like the UK, you can't buy alcohol here until you're 18. So, with Steph's 17th birthday approaching, what's the pub and club scene like? Auckland is just great to go out in. There's so many different environments you can go to. You can go to a party scene like this, where everyone's just dancing and having a great time. Or you can head up to another quieter suburb and, and sit in a laxy uh, couch booth environment and, and talk to total strangers on your left or right. And finally, Steph and Jake, you don't need to worry about making new friends, as you definitely won't be the only people from out of town. It's not like everyone in Auckland is from Auckland. Everyone in Auckland is from elsewhere, just like myself. I've only been here two years, and I've got one of the wider circle of friends I've had in a long time. Come to Auckland, because you won't just meet Aucklanders, you'll meet people from everywhere. Dave and Annabelle Williams and their children, Jake and Stephanie, are putting life in New Zealand to the test. The family were all in agreement about New Zealand property. I think it's a nice house. I like it. Absolutely stunning. Can you just buy this house, please? <laughs> but Mum got cold feet after her day at work. To complicate things by, by walking into a job that is such a contrast to what I'm used to, I know that would be probably quite a stressor. Daughter Stephanie is warming to Auckland. <gasps> no looking! But with boyfriend Dan to think about, she has a lot on her mind. I don't think I'd be able to leave Dan. If I don't move, I'm going to miss people as well. It, you can't sort of seem to win on that one. Will messages from loved ones back home test the family's dreams to the limit? If a move to New Zealand is going to work for all the Williams family, they've got to embrace the lifestyle. But will it live up to their high expectations? Annabelle and Dave are convinced that the great outdoors of New Zealand is for them. And during their trial week, they intend to make the most of every minute of it. But this morning, they're not exactly living the dream. Looks cold, but it isn't, is it? It's really quite warm. Just there. Uh... If that rain wasn't there, it'd be lovely kite surfing. It would. Yeah, well, we'll take your word for it, Dave. Back at the rental property, the teenage contingent are almost out of bed. And the verdict on their parents' behaviour? <laughs> Got a nap. Go out there in this weather, get my wet. But it takes more than a bit of rain to put the Williams off. And despite the weather, there's an active day planned for all the family. First, a race around a local mountain biking park. Annabelle and Dave are ready for anything, but as the rain tips down, their children are feeling reluctant. I'm going to be covered in mud. So <laughs> not going to be good. Yeah. Jake is quietly confident, though. This is going to be pretty good, because I'm um, much better than all my family at biking, so... So he thinks. <gasps> really? We'll soon see. New Zealand's wide-ranging landscape makes it a great place for mountain biking. Excellent activity, absolutely brilliant. You know, it really doesn't matter whether it's a day like today. In some ways, it makes it a bit more fun, really, with the puddles and uh, getting covered in mud. <laughs> Jake is having a ball. This is brilliant because it's something I like and something Steph detests. Steph is far from convinced, and perhaps she's identified the problem. If it was something where you didn't have to pedal, then it'd be fine. Dad has his own theory. There's no clip for any air straighteners either, is there, sir? <laughs> Tearing through muddy puddles has left them cold and wet. What better way for the family to warm up than a trip to a local hot springs in Waiwira? A dip in the warm mineral waters is a great way to get the circulation going and it puts a smile on Steph's face. The biking was wet and muddy and horrible. <laughs> I've been cold ever since. Yeah. But it's nice and warm here. Get happier now then. Yeah. 
But wherever Steph goes this week, there's somebody missing. Dan's on my mind a lot. I miss, I don't know, the stupid little things he does that make me laugh and... I don't know, just seeing him and talking to him. Meanwhile, Mum and Dad are literally throwing themselves into the Auckland way of life. It's time for the family to vote on lifestyle. Will it be the UK or New Zealand? On the count of three. One, two, three. New Zealand! New Zealand. Steph's consistent vote for New Zealand is a big surprise to her parents. At the house, her priorities shift to boyfriend Dan. Hiya. Alright, baby. You okay? Yeah, you? Yeah, not bad. No, I'll miss you. I'll miss you too. <laughs> You'd like it here. It's like <laughs> wherever you are, you're sort of 20 minutes away from a beach. Amazing. I wish I was there. I wish you was here. <laughs> if I did move, would you come over? Move on a six month working visa and then see if you can get citizenship or something. Right, well, I've got to go now. Alright then, baby. Okay, but I'll ring you later and text you. Love you, baby. I love you too. Bye bye. <laughs> Is this another sign that Stephanie is wavering in her resolve not to come? To help the Williams family make up their minds once and for all about emigrating, we've put together some messages from friends and family, including Steph's boyfriend, Dan. Right, David. This is your sister here. Are you surrogate mum? I wish you all the best. I really do. Hi, baby. Don't go running off with any New Zealand guys that are fit and all that, because I'm still waiting. I'm missing you. Dave and Annabelle will always be a team. They've always worked together. They're an absolutely ideal example of a couple that works as one. Jake's been really good to grow up with and we've had a lot of fun with everybody in Witten. And if he does move to New Zealand, then it's going to be a shame because I'll miss like seeing him around in Witten and everything like that. Jake is, is so happy-go-lucky, so laid back. He'll, he'll cruise along. He's a bright boy, a gifted boy, and, and he'll do well, whatever he decides to do. I told her to do whatever she thinks is best. It's like... It's a hard thing to say, really, because it's like it could be a life-changing thing, which is for the better for her. But at the end of the day, I'd, I'd just, I'd hate to see her go. I don't think he realises how much I will miss him and how much I do love him. But I do, from the bottom of my heart, I do. It will be hard. But as long as we can see them off in a cheerful way, rather than be upset. I just wish you all the best. From the bottom of my heart, I really do. It's what I would have expected I think my mum to say because I know that she wouldn't um, she, she wouldn't sort of do the guilt trip thing at all. I know our readers would miss me, but I've lived overseas before and I've, I, the emotional thing doesn't really affect me as much as yourself. It's it's a different relationship for me. Oh because, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Obviously it's, it's my mum. Yeah. Steph's not the only person feeling the distance. Now Annabelle and Dave are divided over leaving loved ones behind. As the week draws to a close, can they let go of emotional ties and follow their dream? 
the Williams family from Scunthorpe came to New Zealand in search of a better way of life. Auckland property left them feeling positive. Having a look around, and, and there's some real gems out there, isn't yeah. there? Uh, yeah. Well within our price bracket, so we're quite optimistic yeah, on that. Very optimistic, really, optimistic that we'll get on something that, that, uh, that uh, really sort of fits the picture that we've got in our heads, really, yeah, yeah, without yeah. breaking the bank. A day at work wasn't enough to make up Annabelle's mind. Although the place of work that I went to wasn't really quite right for me, um, I could still, you know, there are lots of bonuses that I can see to working over here. Son Jake has been quietly confident about a new life down under from the start. I've tried it, it's been a good week, and there's been no bad points about the week I can think of, really. Daughter Steph's glad she made the trip to Auckland. It has been worth coming to see the place, definitely, because you don't know until you see it. But with the weight of family expectation on her shoulders, she's been struggling to make up her mind. It's been a pretty stressful week as well, knowing that sort of I've got to have a decision made as such towards the end. It's been quite stressful. felt a bit like I'm pressured into making my decision. But for mum and dad, her choice is all that matters. It's been yeah. a huge source of anxiety, really. And uh, over quite a long period of time, I've just been trying to sort of rationalise it and make things sort of feel OK if she doesn't come over. All we can do, really, is uh, hope she makes the right decision and uh, yeah. everything comes off. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> It's crunch time. The family must make up their minds in a much-anticipated final vote. Is their future together in the UK, or will they commit to a new start down under? On the count of three, are you ready? One, two, three. New Zealand. Oh what is that? <laughs> I knew you'd do that. What does, what does this mean? I'm undecided. I know it's hard, Steph, but a yes or a no would be a more Well, I know decision. then. What do you want me to say? Well, I don't know. Least... Laugh at me then. In some respects, it's no great surprise. It's no surprise. It's no great surprise in some... But I expected it. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, I think we've got a hell of a lot Quite more a bit of talking, talking to, do. to do. Yeah. Um, to try and drum out a plan. Yeah. A feasible plan. Come on, then. Throughout the week, Dave, Annabelle and Jake were hopeful that Auckland had won Steph over. But ultimately, the pressure of making such a life-changing decision was just too much for her. Despite some disappointment for Annabelle on the work front, she feels strongly that New Zealand is the best place for the whole family. But Steph remains unconvinced, with the lure of loved ones, especially Dan, proving too hard to resist. For now, the Williams family are split whether to move where they're wanted down under. It's a bit of a tight squeeze for a property in Cardiff. In Homes Under the Hammer next on BBC One. And then on the contrary, it's big rooms and high ceilings. In Buy It, Sell It, Bank It at 11. Hello and welcome to Wanted Down Under, the show that catapults a British family right across the other side of the world to help them make the biggest decision of their life. Dave and Annabelle Williams long for the great outdoors of New Zealand. You always go on holiday and you think, oh, I'd love to retire here. I'd love to do this, um, come and live here. And we've got potentially the opportunity to do that. They think it would offer their children, Stephanie and Jake, a promising future. But daughter Stephanie isn't sure she can leave her boyfriend behind. Well, I don't know. I can't just miraculously make a decision, can I now? Are you going to need to at It's some obviously point? a lot easier for you lot than it is for me. Will Stephanie's dilemma hold the family back, or will they end up going where they're wanted down under?
In the current economic downturn, a new life in New Zealand has a strong appeal. Last year, over 18,000 Brits grabbed the chance to transfer their skills. But had they really thought through their big decision to emigrate? We've given another 20 British families the chance of a lifetime a week down under. After that, they'll have to vote one way or the other. Will they stay in the UK or will they move to New Zealand? The Williams family from Scunthorpe live life to the full. They love to be outdoors and spend all their spare time kite surfing. Having worked hard to raise their children, energetic parents Annabelle and Dave dream of starting again in New Zealand. We could just bumble along here, which would be fine in that, or we could have 20 years mm. of being really active, or 30 years of being active in paradise. Yeah. Dave works as a fuel tank driver and Annabelle is an occupational therapist and the main visa applicant seeking work down under. I work with children of, of all ages and um, my aim really is to improve their, their coordination of, of movement. I always feel really lucky to enjoy the job that I do and want to go to work every day. Mum and Dad think a move to New Zealand would benefit the whole family. One of the main reasons is, is to move for the kids really because we think they'll have a lot better chance of making more of a life for themselves. Because I think over here it's got to a point now where you need qualifications um, for the most mundane jobs now. The Williams took a brief trip to New Zealand in 2007. 14-year-old Jake really liked what he saw. It was a lot better than what I expected it to be. Amazing landscapes and really nice towns, places like that. Beaches were really, really good. But following a family argument, 16-year-old Stephanie didn't go, and she has major doubts about her move. It's going to change what happens for the rest of my life. So I think that's why it's so hard, and because I haven't yet been out there and I don't know what the place is like, it's that sort of fear of the unknown. And there's one important reason why she wants to stay at home. My boyfriend Dan's just different to anyone else I've ever been out with. Thinking about moving to New Zealand, I'm thinking, well, what if I miss out on what I could have with him? You can't just make a decision to keep other people happy because it changes your life. Inevitably, her dilemma puts mum and dad in a difficult position. The worst situation, I think, would be if Stephanie didn't, um, didn't go and then having to... I think make that decision as, as a mum and say, you know, am I happy to leave 